Yes. I heard a Charlotte politician bragging that, that, that Charlotte had attracted 925 new companies. Well, no, we didn't get our share somehow. They took our share. You know, we aren't attracting those kinds of companies. We, in fact, we don't seem to be interested in attracting companies unless they hire 500 people. And I'm concerned about that. I think, with that? well, I, I don't see it. And, and uh, I'm just concerned that Charlotte's no, getting all the, all the little companies that are the five-year-old companies that are going to grow, and we're, and we're going after the great big companies and, and missing a lot of opportunities. Like Electrolux? I, I will say that clearly we're after big companies, but we're after smaller companies, too. Today, you, did you read today's paper about Siemens in uh, Charlotte regarding the opening of their new facility, 700 people uh, supplying the electrical energy need or the refurbishing and new production of electrical generation equipment. Turbo coating came to Hickory, announced three months ago, today is their grand opening, 60 people, uh, 60 some thousand dollars a year salaries. So is 60 small, medium, or large? Large for this area. <laughs> small. I mean, who cares? Small. Small. Yeah. It really small. doesn't matter. Yeah. A hundred is usually Yeah. But that will drag out the per capita income. It's an Italian that company way. that's a supplier <laughs> to these guys. If these guys weren't doing this, we wouldn't be getting that. 60 people. Sixty some thousand dollars a year, fantastic international company. Now, does the EDC go after only big companies? Pay attention. Uh, so I'll have to back up what Scott's saying. In the last five years, I've been our, income, our entire focus has been income. on the small companies mm -hmm. because that's what our infrastructure can handle. That's really what we can do. Uh, having a GE of 1,500 to 2,000 employees is probably not going to be what we're going to be. We're going to be geared toward because those companies want to go into major metro areas. So we have to focus on supply chain companies, logistics companies that can fill the voids that we have. We have a lot of empty buildings that we can only handle 60 to 150, 200 employees. And the last six or eight companies we've recruited in Conover, I think the biggest one was BSN Medical, 25 employees. Other than Lee Ender. <coughs> What's going on at 10 o'clock today? <clears throat> at 12. Right. 10 o'clock. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 10 o'clock is another meeting. Yeah. At 12 o'clock we have Lucky Logistics, which is a supplier for three of the other companies here that are major employers for plastic pellets. And they're, they're using a multi or intermodal facility that was designed and built originally for Hickory Springs and General Electric hasn't been used in decades. And they've rebuilt that, doubled the size of it, and plan on doubling the size of it again next year. And across the tracks and the street, they are leasing one of the old Lane Venture properties. You know, move 25 employees in. So, you know, we're, we're focusing. Is that small, on, medium, or large? That's right in our sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> and to the, um, the um, city, can't support, I agree, about the infrastructure when you have these huge, huge companies that we've seen corn that you spoke of, it devastates the area. So it's I think the best strategy is to get these supporting industries, small companies that don't hurt if one or two go out. It everything hurts, but it doesn't devastate the community that we've had with the furniture and with the dot com bust. And and for us, uh, just to touch on that is if one small company goes down, it can be absorbed probably. <coughs> or usually those folks transition to something else, especially the ownership or the executive leadership. Because <coughs> their kids go to school here. They go to church here. They're a member of the Y or the country club. They're invested in the community. They've become a part of our community, whereas mega corporations, say, like a General Electric or a Coin or a Comsco, could pick up and move and take their best and brightest with them. And so it leaves a huge vacuum. And so that, well, that's, that's been our focus, especially I can say in Hickory and Conover and in Newton for about 30 years. Well, the big picture in, the, in that is the cluster development, you know, of those smaller companies and what is the cluster or, and it needs to be multiple clusters of diversity 
to build that resiliency in the economy that you're talking about. I mean, I agree that we can't just land the Fortune 500, you know, just like that. I think that building these smaller companies. You all give away enough money to get that. <laughs> <laughs> you all being the community at large, conservative community, so, conservative state. Well, I think a lot of that is education in that issue, too. If you can show people what the end result is going to be and you can get to them and, you know, lay out the, the process, you know, people, that, that Dell thing is, is the big thing that, that people are, you know, don't want to touch with the 10-foot pole, you know. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going way off, off my presentation <laughs> now, but the reality is that Dell supplied a lot of families a good living wage for five years. And then the state got back all the money that they were supposed to get back. I mean, certainly there were expenses, but clearly there were revenues from the Dell people. We <coughs> shy from trying to get these a lot of times, forgetting that even if they are here five years, they provide facilities and families a lot of benefits during that five years. I mean, I am truthfully, I don't want to give away the farm to everybody. I'm philosophically opposed to it. But I also realize that everybody in this room, when they bought their last car, tried to get the best deal that they could get. And they probably went on the internet and went, looked at somebody in Iowa to try and find out what, what the absolute best deal on that car was. And then they said, here, Mike Johnson, if you don't match this, I'm going to Iowa to get this thing. What do you think uh, autotrader.com is, is doing? It's forcing competition, opening up markets all the way across. Companies are doing that too. And you can't argue that everybody's looking for the best deal. Companies can go across state lines and city lines and whatever. They're going to. So you got to put, you've got to determine what makes reasonable sense, what pays you back, and what are you willing to do in an arm's length transaction to get that company here? Don't get too emotionally invested and give away all your benefits. Make a good return on investment approach and then make a deal <coughs> where if they go bad, you've got contractual provisions that you get repaid. Well, and have a rich and fertile environment so if they go bad, the people who spin out of there will stay with you and start new industries and, and, and be a, be a be it vital to your community. I, I clearly agree with you that the we lost good people after the dot-com bust. We weren't prepared. As a matter of fact, we were probably scared. Dating back from the 1980s when we had this so-called failed incubator that uh, was out here. And uh, so everybody in the community, I mean, I'm, I'm talking way too openly. But uh, everybody in the community has been really scared of the term incubator ever since the middle 1980s when the uh, incubator that we had didn't do exactly like everybody thought it was going to do. And so the whole community said, oh, no, we can't do that. When, as a matter of fact, we do need some entity that will coordinate the, what I'm going to call micro to small business development. Make sure that there's a plan for that opportunity out here. And, and that everybody that supports that, whether it's the Manufacturing Solution Center, the Small Business Center, the SBTDCs, everybody is working together. And somebody that is trying, Tom, to establish a new facility uh, is, knows who to go to. You know, I think now we've got multiple points of contact and we've got some concern over, you know, who do I go to, where do I go, when do I go there and all this, who do I, where do I get permits and all that. So uh, I, I think that we should address that, particularly as a short term issue that we're not really coordinating right now. But in, in a couple of months ago in the Charlotte Observer, they also had a comparison about you know Charlotte being somewhat risk averse as compared to some Silicon Valley where where people that were in successful ventures 
typically had stories about three to four failed ventures before they got to that point. And like going back to this incubator thing, you know, in, in an entrepreneurial community, a certain level of failure is just gonna be, be part of the game. And you gotta just accept that as a learning experience rather than stopping. There's also an ambivalence related to existing businesses worrying about these incubating businesses becoming challenges to their existing business. You know, an apple and orange, you say, well, that's apple and oranges. They're both fruit. You know, if they sell that orange, then it's going to affect my apple sales. I think that's more percep perception than reality. I think there is some of it, but it's not as much as you think. I, I personally have not seen a lot. Have you? I've, I've heard a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to know what you're talking about specifically. Uh, there's, obviously, there's always the, the existing industries that may or may not want to competitive. That's the nature of business. Um, and is it fair to give somebody a leg up over somebody else that lived through it? You know, I hear every day, probably multiple times every day, you know, you're giving XY company this, and you haven't given us crap. That's you know? what I'm talking about, exactly. So, but the reality is, you do what they did now, we'll do exactly the same thing for you. Exactly. The fact that you did it 18 years ago, before incentives were invented, sorry, times have changed, you know? So, and if you bring if you a new proposal, we did, we'll do what we did for you. If you Whether bring a new proposal to expand your business, you may enjoy in the fruits of what the EDC does. Yeah. That creates That's the energy. What Nathan does, you know? but, but too, on that, and I can say from my industry, I'm in the hosiery business. We welcome any hosiery in this area because when we have a piece of it die off, you have less labor, less supporting industry. So we actually would love to have more hosiery. Might be a competitor, you're competing with labor, different suppliers, but it actually helps our business rather than hurts it. It moves business. your industry forward. Well, and that's what we, so I think your perspective of just infighting stuff, in reality, when you have a business, you welcome that. We welcome supporting industries and more of it because it just makes us better. That's right. The mall concept is proof of that because, like I mentioned before, is that you'll never go into a mall and see one shoe store. Hmm. And most people don't understand this. Not studies show this is back in the 1990s that uh, if one shoe store brings in X dollars, you'd think two stores would be in double, and actually two stores bring in 3.2 percent more in volume. Right. So if you don't get your share of that, that's your problem. So I don't, I don't, I don't agree that 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 hurts competition. The incubation, and what you're talking about, an elephant is all for all practical purposes a new incubation theory. It's just a new way approach of it. So I think you have to have that. But if we can resolve all the other issues of saying we're a city that we only thing we can attract are people that hire 25 people because I understand that the city says that we don't have the capacity for infrastructure. That's not an absolute fact. That's that's a concept in the a thought process. I agree that we can't bring in a company that has 15,000 employees, but my guess is that the city can't offer infrastructure for a country that has 500 employees. 